after giving the first two games a definitive coating, it was predictable that Age of Empires 3 would also be taking a seat on the operating table. We're certainly not complaining, because in this present withered RTS landscape that hardly no publisher wants to venture into, Microsoft is a small ray of hope looming far into the distance. However, it was not always obvious if Age of Empires 3 would get a facelift, reason being that this game was generally regarded as the worst in its series, even if it is difficult to give an obvious reason as to why. Age of Empires 3 didn't sell badly back in the day, but by the time 2005 rolled in, the RTS genre was in a downward spiral. This prompted many developers to experiment with new concepts without the fans of the series actually asking for it. For example, the 3D engine made for beautiful places and realistic collapsing buildings, but the interface was made too haphazardously, leading many fans finding it difficult to find their way. It's kind of like boxing with your computer. The campaign was also no longer based on more serious historical events, but rather followed the Black family throughout the 16th to 19th century, telling a pirate's tale in order to avoid delivering harsh criticism of the US's colonial past. And finally, the gameplay itself felt a bit strange as well, with hero units taking on a more central role, treasures that you could pick up on the map, and a home city where you could build reinforcements and send them to your village in the form of cards. These were all attempts to modernize traditional RTS games, but not everyone liked it. This definitive edition cannot iron out all of its flaws, but does a credible attempt. To begin with, let's dive into the visual adjustments. The fact that there is a 3D engine running under the cap makes it a little bit difficult to immediately realize how many things have been improved. But when we take a direct comparison, a number of things stand out. Uh, to begin with, all the textures have been updated. They look surprisingly sharp and detailed. The textures look vibrant and they make the game feel alive. The user interface has also been streamlined and is more in line with the previous installments. There is no more intrusive bar that takes over a quarter of your screen and panels disappear when you have nothing selected. The deck builder component in your home city now has more oversight and feels less invasive. And finally, the models of both the buildings and the units have been modified, so that they have more polygons and look less like a stack of bricks. And these are all things that initially don't stand out because you expect it to be there in this day and age. But it is a big difference from the original and makes the action look good, even up close. The campaign, however, received little to no adjustments. The cutscenes still come across as a bit stiff and weak, although the Definitive Edition also comes with all the expansion packs, whose campaigns are a lot more varied and interesting. The creators have also added a series of historical battles, similar to Age of Empires 2, for those who want a little bit more content. And in addition, two new civilizations come into the fold, each with their own architecture and style, the Incas and the Swedes. This definitive edition is unlikely to attract the same wave of interest as its predecessor, but fans of the series will get a more streamlined package. In short, this game gets a 7 out of 10 for me. Unlike the previous installments, this definitive edition does not deliver any world shocking changes, but offers a beautifully finished package to complete the trilogy. And thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more gaming news, reviews, and release roundups, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss another upload. And I'll see you when I see you. That's awesome.